okay, talking about metabolism, we're going to look at uh, the basic overview of metabolism, whether it's aerobic respiration or anaerobic respiration. And we're going to talk about some of the differences between aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration, just to have somewhat of an overview of what we're looking at. And then this video is really going to focus on glycolysis, which is the first portion of this. If we, if we look at this diagram, we can break this diagram down into three basic components. The first component is glycolysis, which we'll talk about. Um, the second component is going into the citric acid cycle, which is the Krebs cycle. And the third component is the electron transport chain. Um, the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain really need to have a separate video um, because it gets pretty in-depth. So I just want to have give you somewhat of an understanding of the overview of aerobic or anaerobic respiration and the steps that it goes through and then we're going to focus just on glycolysis which is just the first step up here. Now aerobic respiration um, you can produce a maximum of 38 ATP. So what does that mean? If you start off with a glucose molecule, you can break that glucose down into 38 ATP. And remember what ATP is. ATP is adenosine triphosphate. It's the energy carrier molecule of our cells. Um, we need it for energy. Okay? We want ATP in most cases. Um, aerobic respiration, maximum 38 ATP. Anaerobic respiration varies. Anaerobic respiration can be anywhere from 2 to 36 ATP. And then we'll talk a little bit about fermentation. Now, fermentation is a type of anaerobic respiration. So, we know that anaerobic respiration, we can have anywhere from 2 to 36 ATP, depending on what course it takes. When we're talking about fermentation, we can have a maximum of 2 ATP. And I'll probably make another video on fermentation to talk about that specifically. With fermentation, you, you end up with one of two things. You end up either with an acid, lactic acid, or you end up with an alcohol. Fermentation does not go through the Krebs cycle or the electron transport, uh, electron transport chain but it will go through glycolysis. Okay, So now that's a lot of information being thrown at you, um, but try to break it down. We have aerobic respiration, we have anaerobic respiration, and we have fermentation, which is a type of anaerobic respiration. Now, regardless of what we're talking about, it will always go through glycolysis first. Glycolysis always has to happen. And from there, the pathway can be different, you know, whether it's aerobic or anaerobic. Um, and let's just review this one more time. Aerobic respiration, maximum ATP produced is 38. And what you're looking at, this specific diagram is looking specifically at aerobic respiration. Okay, if you look in the bottom corner, you can see 38 ATP. Now, it's going to take a couple of videos to explain how we got there, but we will get there. Anaerobic respiration, remember, maximum ATP that can be produced is 2 to 36. And then fermentation, maximum ATP is 2. And remember, fermentation is a type of anaerobic respiration. Now, this video is really going to be focused on glycolysis, so that's what we're going to talk about. Um, I kind of like this diagram because it's broken down. If you see the gray lines in here, it kind of sections it off. Um, go up to the top gray line and cover up from here down. Um, if, I, if I had something, I would cover that up for you, uh, but I don't have my drawing pad out right now. Um, we're going to look just at the top section. We're going to look just at glycolysis. First off, uh, ask, what, ask yourself, what is glycolysis? What is it, by definition, what does glycolysis mean? Um, glycolysis means that you're splitting sugar. It means that you're taking a, a glucose molecule and you're breaking it down. And remember, uh, glucose is C6H12O6. 
is a 1 to 2 to 1 carbon hydrogen oxygen uh, ratio. So what works well for me sometimes, um, again I apologize I don't have my, my drawing pad out, um, but if you can draw six circles and put C's in them and that's going to represent your glucose molecule. After you draw that, draw a big line to the other side of the paper and draw three circles and put C's in them and then maybe a few lines down draw the same thing another three circles with C's in them. Now what that represents is it's starting off with your glucose molecule and then you're going to end up with two pyruvic acids and where you have the three circles and I told you to do that twice that represents the two pyruvic acids. Okay. Always try to look at the bigger picture as you're learning about this and then work yourself inwards and then learn more of the details that are happening. For example, with glycolysis, let's look at the big picture. We end up with two pyruvic acids and then we can work our way inwards and see what else is happening. If we look here, um, it says that we end up with two pyruvic acid, which is what we have on our paper. It also says that we end up with two NADH molecules and we end up with two ATP molecules. So let's talk about the ATP. How do we get there? Now, um, it, it, you know, it depends how in depth you need to understand this. Some instructors and some professors want you to only understand what the products are. They want you to know that glycolysis, you're going to have products of two pyruvic acids two ATP molecules and two NADH molecules and that's enough. You don't need to understand anymore. Other instructors, teachers, professors might want you to understand a little bit more and in that case we're going to talk about it. For ATP, um, in order to get those ATP this is how it works. First off, we need to spend two ATP. Okay. In return for spending those two ATP, we get two ADP. Okay, so we're dealing with adenosine triphosphate, and now we're dealing with adenosine diphosphate. Okay, so we spent two ATP, now we got two ADP. Now, we're going to spend four ADP to get four ATP. Okay that gives us a net gain of 2 ATP. So that's how we ended up with this. Let me review that one more time. We spent 2 ATP and got 2 ADP in return. We spent 4 ADP and got 4 ATP in return. So if we if we spent 2 ATP but then we ended up with 4 ATP we have a net gain of 2 ATP. So that's how we got there. That's how we got that. Now, um, in order to get our NADH, we need to spend two NAD positives. Okay, that's what we'll call them for now. NAD positives. You spend two NAD positives and you get two NADHs. Now, you might be looking at that saying, you know, who cares what's in an ADH and why does it matter? When we get into the other videos and we're talking about the Krebs cycle, the citric acid cycle, the NADHs, and you can see this real clearly, it comes into that cycle. And essentially, it, it cashes out for 3 ATP. Okay? Um, more specifically, NADHs end up going to the electron transfer cycle. Um, I think it's a little misleading there. Um, they don't go directly into the Krebs cycle. It joins up with the Krebs cycle, um, and the Krebs cycle plays a role, but ultimately your NADHs go into your electron transport chain. So. Sorry if I didn't explain that real well, but your NADH is going to your electron transport chain. Each NADH molecule um, has enough energy to make three ATP. 
Okay, we're always looking at the final energy yield, and that's why that's why that matters. So again, let's look at the overview of glycolysis. We start off with a molecule of glucose, and we get two ATP. How did we get those ATP? We spent two adenosine triphosphate molecules. We got two adenosine diphosphate molecules. We spent four adenosine diphosphate molecules, and we got four adenosine triphosphate molecules, which gave us a net gain of two ATP. It also gave us two pyruvic acids. And then over here, we spent two NAD positives, and we got two NADHs. The NADHs go into the electron transport chain, and they cash out for an equivalent of three ATP. Okay, um, I think that covers about everything with glycolysis that I wanted to cover at least. If you have questions on this video, let me know, but make sure you understand this video before you go on to the next.